Welcome back. So in the last video, what we did, in the last video, what we did is we looked to find the net electric field produced by a rod. In one of those videos, we saw we did it with a rod that had a uniform charge distribution. But in the second one we did, it did not have a uniform charge distribution. In other words, it had a variable charge distribution. And for that, we had to use integration by parts. Of course, you can be forced to use other techniques as well. In this problem, it's going to be a little bit different because we're not going to have just a linear rod. We're actually going to have a rod, and you can imagine it being bent, okay, to where the rod essentially looks like this. So where it's bent sort of into a semicircle, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be a semicircle. It could be a quarter circle. But the idea is going to be exactly the same. So essentially, each point, each point on this semicircle rod Okay, it's still a rod. It's just it just has a curvature. It has an arc length. Okay, it's still going to produce a net electric field at the origin. Okay, and you could draw electric field vectors for it. But here here's my argument for you. Okay, first of all, what we have to understand is that is that this has a radius r. Okay, and in each point on here, I could pick this point right here. I could pick this point on here. Every point on this curvature is the same distance from the origin. So that's a requirement for these types of problems, and that's generally what will happen. And so if you were to extend this out and, you know, draw the rest of the circle, okay, what you would find is that, again, each point is equidistant from the center on the curvature, okay? Now here's my argument for you, okay? Let's say I wanted to, let's say I was thinking about, let's say the, uh, the electric field produced by this point and let's say that with respect to this point, which is 0 slash 2 pi, let's say this is pi over 4 radians, okay? Then let me pick another point, and let's call this negative pi over 4 radians. And let's say I want to calculate, I want to figure out the electric field produced by both points, okay? So for, for, for a, a small moment, we're assuming they're point charges. Okay, so let's just think about these as if they were point charges. Let's think about the net electric field at the origin. So what I'll do is, is we're going to assume that the, the rod is positively charged. Well, let's think about the electric field due to this one at the top. So, you know, you're going to draw your electric field, and it's going to look something like this, right? And you can, you can draw an x component to that, right? And you can draw a y component, which in this case points down, okay? And let me actually make the other one. Let's make the other one dark blue, just to distinguish it. Let's think about the electric field produced by this point at negative pi over 4 radians. So again, we'll kind of do the same thing. And we can draw another electric field vector. And once again, we can draw an x component. And we can draw a y component, but this y component points up. Okay? So what's the point? Well, the point is that you can, for, for something in which the midpoint of the rod is on the x-axis, so notice that the midpoint of the rod is on the x-axis. Whenever you have the midpoint of the rod on the x-axis, okay, the y components will all cancel out, okay, because I challenge you, find, you know, let's say I pick this point right here. Let's do this in gray. Let's say I pick this point right here, okay. Can you find another point on the rod in which its y component will cancel out that y component. Well, it's this point right here. Those two points, their electric field vectors, their y components cancel. Now, their x components are additive. None of the x components here cancel out, but all the y components do cancel out. For instance, if I was to pick a spot right here, let's say I pick this spot right here, you can find another point that whose y component will cancel it out. And that's this point right here. So the idea is that for every single one of these electric field vectors, there's a corresponding one whose y component will cancel it out. Okay? So that's a really important distinction to understand. So the goal with these types of problems is you, you basically look at your arc and you find its midpoint, and you put its midpoint, the midpoint of the arc length, on the x-axis. And when you do that, what will end up happening is all the y components of the electric field cancel out, leaving only the x components, which are additive. Okay. So having said that, let's actually figure out how you would compute. How would you compute the electric field? Well, I think we've established at this point that the x components are the only ones that matter. Okay. So let's do this. Let's 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 
draw an electric field vector. Okay, so this is our electric field vector like this. Let's say that's all theoretical, right? It's of course not drawn to scale, okay? And let's say this angle right here is theta, and by alternate interior angles, this is theta as well, okay? So this vector that's in light blue, this is the electric field, this is the differential electric field total produced by this differential charge element dq, okay? So if I look at that differential charge element, it's going to produce a differential electric field element dE total, okay? And that's represented by this light blue vector. But remember what we said is that only the x components matter because all the y components cancel out. So let me do this. Let me draw the, the x component. And the x component by vector addition is just this one right here, where the angle that subtends it um, from the dE total is theta. Okay, And this one, we'll call it differential ex to denote that it's the differential element of the electric field in the x direction only, okay? And you'll get, and assuming your midpoint of the arc is on the x-axis, you'll get this special relationship where you can say that the differential electric field element in the x direction is equal to the product of the differential total electric field element times the cosine of theta. And that's a really important relationship that works whenever you set up a problem like this. The y components cancel out, so all you care about is the x components, assuming that the midpoint of the arc is centered on the x-axis, okay? So we said that, and we're actually gonna compute dq in a very similar manner to the way we computed it um, in the last problem. Okay, in the last problem what we said is that we said that if I have the total charge of a rod Q, um, that corresponds to a differential charge dQ. And I can correspond that to the total length L, which corresponds to a differential length, which we call dX. Okay, and dX is just a differential length. And whenever you solve this for dQ, we got that dq is equal to q divided by l times dx for a rod. So all this stuff right here, this is for a linear rod. Okay? And we said that q over l, this was just lambda, the linear charge density of the rod, times dx. And this is only for a rod that has no curvature. And whenever you talk about x, when you talk about a dx, okay, what you're talking about is when there's no curvature, like it's a straight line, you know. But if you have curvature, okay, you're no longer dealing with with a change in linear displacement. You're talking about a change in arc length, okay. So for a curvature, for a curvature, now your equation for dq is dq is equal to lambda times ds. And if you've taken calculus 2, which at this point you probably have, ds is a differential arc length. So this dq that's here has a corresponding differential arc length, ds. So what we need to do is we need to get a term for ds. So think back to your calculus 2 days. When did you ever integrate ds and the answer is you didn't you got it in terms of something else and you integrated that so let's think about what ds is well if i just have a generic arc length delta s what is that equal to well it's equal to the radius of the component of the circle times the displacement in radians um you know from the origin which is delta theta Okay, so an arc length is equal to r delta theta. Well, if I put this in differential notation, what I get is that ds is equal to r d theta. Okay, and this is actually what I'm going to use in my integral. Okay, the other thing that I want to remember is that if I have any differential electric field element, it's equal to Coulomb's constant, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared, times dq all over r squared, okay? And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug things in, start setting some things up. Okay, so here's what I know. I know that my total, or excuse me, my differential electric field element in the x direction is equal to the differential electric field element 
total times the cosine of theta. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to, you know, express DE total in other terms. And the way we're going to do that is by using this formula right here, um, K, delta, K DQ over R squared. So this equals K Coulomb's constant times DQ over R squared times the cosine of theta. And that is basically the differential element of the electric field in the x direction. Okay, But what did we just do? We got an expression for dq, which was basically lambda ds. But we can take this ds expression and plug it in here. So we end up getting that dq is equal to lambda r d theta. And this r d theta, recall, is just the differential arc length component. So what I probably need to do at this point is basically give some numbers for this particular problem. Okay, so let, let's give, hmm, let's give a lambda, just, um, let's make, let's make the, let's make life easy. Let's just make it 1 ninth times 10 to the minus ninth coulombs per meter. We did this in the last video just to make the math easy. Okay. Okay. So let's see if we can figure this out. Okay. So this is equal to, well, let's start, let's get our expression in here. K times DQ over R squared. DQ is just lambda times R times D theta. And then we have cosine of theta and all over R squared. Okay. If we simplify this a little bit, we can cancel one of the r's, and we get k times lambda times cosine of theta d theta over r. And this is basically my differential electric field element in the x direction. So now what I'll do is let me, let me set this up as an integral. So I'll say that d e sub x, the differential electric field in the x direction, is equal to, let me get my constants over here. The constants are k, that's always a constant, right? Lambda is a constant. Here's a question for you. What's constant, theta or r? In other words, which one's variable? Well, notice that for this semicircle, every point is equidistant from the center. So r is actually a constant. But theta changes because I'm basically going to be changing from here, which is, this is negative pi over 2, up, up to here, which is pi over 2. If you were doing it in degrees, it would be negative 90 degrees to 90. So theta is actually changing. R is a constant. So you have these constants, okay, multiplied by cosine of theta d theta. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an integral. So if you integrate d e sub x, the differential element of the electric field in the x direction, you'll integrate that from 0 to e, and you'll just get e sub x, e, the electric field component. And then you'll integrate this guy from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, And let's go ahead and compute what this is. So basically, we get, and actually let me do this, let me specify Let's say the radius is one meter, because I didn't specify that before. Let's say the radius is equal to one meter, just to make the math easy. So what's k? k is nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. What was lambda? Lambda was one ninth times 10 to the minus ninth coulombs per meter. So one ninth times 10 to the minus ninth coulombs per meter. The radius is just one meter. So this makes it nice. That's the reason I chose these numbers is so everything would cancel out nicely. And we don't actually have to use a calculator in this case. And then we're going to multiply that times the integral of cosine of theta d theta. And we're going to evaluate that from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. The integral of cosine of theta d theta is sine of theta. And that's going to be evaluated from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Well, then all we have to do at this point is we, first of all, all this over here, this is just 1, right? So basically this really nicely simplifies to sine of theta evaluated from negative pi over 2 
to positive pi over 2. Okay, this is the integral. So effectively what this becomes is we're going to take sine of pi over 2 and subtract off sine of negative pi over 2. And this is going to be our answer. Now here's the question. Going back to our picture, what is the sine of pi over 2 and what's the sine of negative pi over 2? Well, when you're looking at a unit circle like this, okay, you can sort of think of it as the sine is sort of the vertical component and, you know, the sine is the vertical component and the cosine is the horizontal component. Well, if you're taking the sine of pi over 2, that's just 1, assuming that this is a unit circle, this is 1. If you take the sine of negative pi over 2, the vertical component is minus 1. So what this literally becomes is the sine of pi over 2, which is 1, minus the sine of negative pi over 2, which is negative 1. Okay? And so what you end up getting is that the net electric field in the x direction is going to be equal to 2 newtons per coulomb. So this is the net electric field whenever you place this radius of curvature such that the midpoint of the radius of curvature is on the x-axis. So all the y components cancel out and the x components become completely additive. Okay, So that's an, that is such an important distinction. You always set up these radius of curvature problems such that the midpoint of the arc length is on the x-axis so that the math works out really nicely. And so you only have to worry about the x components. So I hope this video made sense. In general, when you're dealing with radius of curvature problems for these electric field integrals, it pretty much, un unless, you have, unless you have a variable uh, charge density, pretty much it's always going to boil down to the integral of cosine of theta d theta, in which case it's just sine of theta evaluated from the limits of integration. Okay. In the next video, we'll actually do a problem in which we have a variable electric field. See you in the next video.